Hey, good morning. Hope everybody had a good week. Uh, mine's been hectic. It has been really hectic. Uh, second week of the job, and it is going well, but I want it to go faster than what it's going. Some people say I have a slight patience this year. <laughs> Learn from the best. But uh, anyway, busy week, a lot of stuff going on. I know, I think everyone that I've talked to has just been this just running week with all kinds of stuff. And this week I'm learning this job and trying to balance the, our ministry with it. And some of you that I reach out to during the week, you may find yourself on a different day. I actually started having to put a calendar together other than my list and be reminded by phone. But it's, it's all good. Use the technology. It's there to help. <coughs> Sometimes there's just so much to do, and I'm the kind of person to think I need to learn quickly and just to be up and running, juggling and handling it all. I, I know I'm the only person in here that's like that. They think they just need to be up running, and if they're having an issue, it is all on them. They should have learned it back, better, faster. Sometimes... There are situations though, that require setting limits or boundaries or sharing responsibility and small goals in order to reach your overall goals. Work, school, family, multiple situations. Sometimes we look up at setting, uh, we look at setting boundaries as putting up walls, and some people do that. And to put up walls just to have walls and to keep from communicating with people. Everyday people, I'm not talking about toxic people where you kind of keep your distance or else you're going to get poisoned along with them. But some people put up boundaries that can be harmful. They put up boundaries to keep other people out so that no one sees their hurt and they don't have to address that hurt. They don't have to address that anger or whatever it is that's causing it. That's not good because all the negative feelings, all the hurt, it all stays there. The loss and the grief, then it stays there and it never evolves like it should. <laughs> in the right circumstances, though, boundaries are good things. Now, a boundary isn't a way to throw, out, throw away your responsibility. If you have a job like in nursing, nursing, we tend to delegate out some responsibilities to other people on the floor. But the responsibility is still ours. We have to check back up with it. You have to, you, you don't completely throw away your responsibility. You find a better way to do it without burning yourself up. And God's word has examples of people establishing boundaries as solutions to problems or in obedience to God. Got to researching and found some folks. And the first person we're going to look at is Moses and we're also going to look at a couple other reasons for setting up boundaries in our lives. And if you have your Bibles, I'm going to get you turned to Exodus 18, verses 13 through 26. That's Exodus 18, verses 13 through 26. Now, here where we're at right now is the Israelites have just left Egypt. They crossed the Red Sea, and they're on their way to the Promised Land. And now, Moses, this is a large group, thousands of people. And they know Moses is the leader. And they're all coming to Moses as the leader. He set up his tent. And Kim, this one will strike home for you. He set up his tent where I was going to set mine up at. He knew I was going to set up my tent there. <laughs> and he was just being selfish. <laughs> Moses, straighten it out. Who's been a leader in some situation, whether it's a student leader or a church leader? Who's, had, who's been the leader in some point in time? I'm great. The conflict arise. It does. It does because when you have more than one person, you're going to have issues sometimes. Even with the best of friends, you're going to have issues and disagreements and per perspectives. And uh, well, Moses' father-in-law, who's Jethro, Jethro was a Midianite. When Moses was exiled, when he had to leave Egypt, he was he almost died. And he was discovered by these ladies tending uh, flocks of sheep and goats. They were the daughters of Jethro. 
a minion. He married one of them. And Jethro was coming to visit him. He was a real powerful man, real powerful man and wealthy man. And in these first few verses, 13 through 16, he was looking at Moses like, what are you doing? You can't even eat without somebody coming to you and just worrying you to death. This is going on from morning to night. And Moses told his father, well, the people come to me. What does God have to say about this? And I just can't turn it loose. Anyone feel like they wake up sometimes, put your feet on the floor, and it's on the floor all day till they get back in bed that night? When you go to get ready for bed, does it feel like you've done anything? You've been working all day, but does it feel like you've done anything? And if you say no, it's okay. Because I've been feeling like that. Even though I know I have. I know I'm accomplishing, but it doesn't feel like at the rate I need to. Now I know I'm the only impatient person in here, or they'll be listening to this. But, what are you doing then? If you don't feel like you're making any headway and you look and you're like, I was busy all day, but nothing got done. And it's still coming, it's still coming and coming and coming. Remember Bruce Almighty? Anybody see that? Where there's a little post-it notes, Jim Carrey, and he, uh, God trades with him for a day, and he takes all these post-it notes on the computer, solves all these problems, and then in just a few seconds, the computer's covered with more post-it problems, post-it notes. Sometimes life's like that. In the way we're doing, it's not working. And I found this out kind of firsthand. My first couple nursing jobs were in areas where we didn't use text. <coughs> We did everything on our own. And then when I got in situations where I had a tech, I didn't know how to use them, and I was about to kill myself. They gave us these techs to, to work with so they could help take some of the responsibility. And I didn't know how to use them. Sometimes God will give you what you need to get through a situation, but you got to be willing to let it go. And look at things differently. You know, verses 17 through 23... Jethro starts telling him, this thing that you're doing is not good. You're going to wear out. You and then the people you're working that you're with, you're not going to do them any good. There are people I know that are listening to this or will be listening to this that are caregivers. How many caregivers take care of themselves like they should? Very few. You're wearing, you'll wear yourself out. Jethro's solution for Moses was to find good men of God. And it could be people of God in this day and time, just at that time, it was men. Nancy, you're fine. You ever have to answer a phone, you get right ahead. And it's... Uh, and teach them the laws. Teach them what to do and how to do it. And that's another thing. If we get someone to help us, do we teach them right? Do we teach them really what they need to do? Do we sometimes maybe over-teach them? Like say we're getting them to help out with something around the house and just, uh, no, here, let me show you how to do it. And they continue to show you and show you and show you. And I'm guilty of this on the cooking side. I'm guilty of this on the cooking side. I have to be fair. But even when we do have someone that's trying to help us, do we not let go? I know in my own, I know in my own uh, life with it, it's hard for me to let go of some stuff. But is anyone right now, you overloaded, but you got Jethro in your life trying to tell you? You're going to wear out. You need to do something different. Has any of us been a Jethro trying to keep somebody from running themselves to death? Sometimes life's a sprint. Then we have to run like we are the third monkey going to Noah's Ark and it's starting to rain. You better hurry it up. Other times it's a marathon and we have to pace ourselves. Like if you're starting college or you're going 
going through some kind of school program, pace yourself. You will wear out. Now I have to admit that I've had times where my pride just kept me running. Trying to do everything because not everybody can do it like I can. When in reality, there's a lot of people that probably do it better than I can. But my pride keeps me from that. Again, I know I'm the only person that's in here or listening to that, that the pride and their pride is an issue for me. What goeth before the fall? Our pride. We mean our pride is something we can do well, but sometimes can't open the doors up for us. And when a friend comes in and they're trying to help you, and we look at we look at that they're calling us weak or we don't know what we're doing instead of they're concerned about us and they love us and they're trying to take some of the load off. Satan only needs a small opening. Because you think about it, the times you felt most vulnerable to giving up and throwing up your hands, hadn't it been when you've been isolated? Those friends that are trying to help you, or family that's trying to help you, and your pride just kind of pushes them away, and you're by yourself. You're not by yourself. God's there, but there's also something else there, too. There's people. Call me weak. Get them. Pop with weed. Slice up onions. Really? <laughs> You've been slicing up onions for years. They don't need to be talking about you about that. Or... I have done this in school, or I've done this at work, and now they're saying we need to change, and it's always been great. There's always going to be change, and it's not an insult to you. It's just a fact of life, there's change. And there are times when we're not going to be the smartest kid in the class. There's going to be times where folks can do stuff better than we can. The stress of trying to do too much can lead to us trying to get relief in bad ways. Too much alcohol, drugs, whether they're prescription or non-prescription, if they're not taken in the way they're supposed to be, or you're having a problem stopping them, that can be an issue. Relationship issues, because who, when we get frustrated and we get wore out and we get a little bit grumpy, who do we take it out on? Perfect strangers? No. We take it out on those people we love. Those friends. Those friends who are like family. Our family. And we just... Now, thankfully, my wife is very fortunate. She's married to someone that doesn't do that. <laughs> now, I have, an extremely, I have an extremely patient, patient wife. Who has put up with me through kidney stones and sickness and two degrees and Lord knows what else. And she, I am blessed to have her. But we do take out our frustrations and our stresses on those we love. Isn't that another way that the devil tries to isolate us? You have cracks in those relationships, those support systems. And then where do you turn to? The bad support systems. Those coping mechanisms that won't keep you. God works through people in our lives to guide us. Paul wrote in Ephesians 2.10, For we are his workmanship. We're created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we could walk in them. God puts people in your lives to help you because we all need it, and we can't do it by ourselves. Now, I'm going to go to verses 24 through 26 back in Exodus, and Moses listened to him. And so he chose men out of all of Israel and made them heads, leaders of fifties and hundreds and thousands. So basically it was like your local court, state court, federal court. And then the big stuff got brought to him and he was able to balance, find balance with this. That framework is still actually used in modern courtrooms throughout the world. Because we weren't meant to be alone. Paul wrote in uh, Romans 12. Thanks, Mac. <laughs> I'll get you how 
clamoring on next time, we'll see if anybody spots that. <laughs> uh, over there, we'll, we'll uh, have a TikTok going. And that's a good, and that uh, brings us to a good point. We are not meant to be alone, as Mac was up here with me. Romans 12. Romans 12 is just a, it is a chapter on Christian living. And Paul talks about how there are many parts to a body. Kidneys can't do what the heart does. Heart can't do what the brain does. Brain can't do what the liver does. In our relationships, there are going to be people that do things better than us, and we're going to have to work with them. And we do it for the right reason. Sometimes you need to set boundaries up, though, because someone, they're not trying to help you. They may be trying to hurt you. Now, an example of someone being one, a group of people that bend to their wishes is in Daniel. Daniel 1, verses 8 through 18. Now, what happened here is that the Israelites, this is hundreds of years after Moses, the Israelites had been conquered by the Babylonians. They took the best and the brightest of their young people and brought them to Babylon. They were basically trying to turn them into Babylonians to erase the Israelite culture, the Jewish culture. This is when you want, when you're an army and you go into another country, communications and the children, if you're going to be an occupying company, an occupying army, you adapt the children to your way of thinking and they realize that's normal. That's the normal for them. But Daniel, who was one of these, and his friends, because part of the routine, when you were taken the best in the bride, and you're carried into the king's palace, you eat what he eats. And you drink wine, and you do all this, and they were, uh, they told the official, no, I can't do that. Our laws, according to God, prohibit us from eating a lot of this food. And the king, you know, and the guy that's in charge of him said, the king will kill me if I don't do this. And Daniel said to challenge, you know, I, I, I want you to test this. Bring me and my friends vegetables and water and you keep the other recruits on king's food and his wine and all this tribe for 10 days. And they were being taught every day. They had these tests and he was, uh, so he tried it. Daniel and his friends stood out. They went against the grain. They went against what was accepted at that time. And it doesn't matter if you're young or old, aren't we still being tested? Aren't we still being asked to stand out in some ways and isn't it awkward? It's awkward to say, no, this is wrong. I read this in the Bible, this is wrong. I know this is wrong. I'm not going to pick on that person. I'm not going to lie about this person when they, did, they didn't do this. I'm not going to be mean to this person just because y'all are going to make me look cool. I'm not going to do that. It's hard to stand out. Because it's so much easier to stand in, to just blend in and be part of the crowd. But anyway, the guards did that. The handlers, and they just gave them vegetables and water. And over the next 10 days, they had tremendous scores. They outdid everyone. They stood out because God blessed them. They, rose, they eventually rose to the top of the Babylonian court. They eventually got Babylonian names. Daniel was an advisor to two Babylonian kings, and God worked through him and gave him prophecy to still be looked at today. His prophecy, I think it's Daniel 7 or Daniel 9, even foretold Jesus. The term son of man, Daniel, that's where it came from. These young men set boundaries they knew that were right in God's eyes and God walked with them, used them, made them prosper. And we don't do this 
so that God will bless us. We do it because it's the right thing. Part of the problem is we're given free will to make our own choices. We have the decision to make word versus world. And it's a tough decision. Media can tell us Christians are bad, they're stuck up, they're narrow-minded. Well, so are some folks that go to Walmart, but you don't quit going. <laughs> and there are some people that have hurt. This. There are some people that have been hurt by the church, and I would be lying if I said there weren't. Best thing to tell you: don't be one of those people. Pray for the addict. Pray for the millionaire. Pray for any of them in between. And if you're faced with a tough decision, God, I don't know what to do. Give me the words to say and the actions to take and the courage to do and say them. I pray that almost every day. Because we answer for what we do and don't do. In Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he shall also reap. There's an answering for what we do and don't do. Some of these decisions, yeah, pretty easy. Some of them not so much. Sometimes our free will and our sin nature can make decisions a lot harder. It's hard to stand up for that person that can't. And it's hard to stand up for the one who can't do anything for you because it's human nature. Buy an appropriate muffler. But it's a human nature to, to help out those that can help us. Now, one of the last things we're going to look at, we're going to go farther on into Galatians. We'll back a chapter. Galatians 5, verses 13 through 24. This is actually crossing some fruit of the Spirit here. And Paul wrote in verse 13, For you are called to freedom, brethren. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word in the statement, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take care that you're not consumed by one another. Paul recognized we're given the ability by God to make our own decisions, and there are dangers from not having God-inspired boundaries in place. Because we're all born with the same nature, whether up here, sitting in those chairs, listening. And most of us go to work, go to school, and we have contact with folks of the opposite sex or folks that we're attracted to, and have boundaries in place. Even if it's with a relationship, have a healthy boundary. Make sure that that person is someone, if you have a relationship with them, they love you and you love them and they love you and they want you to grow and be what you can be, not be what you want them, what they want you to be. Because that can be scary. Because your idea of the future and theirs and God's plan for you may be totally different. Are they concerned about what you're doing because they're afraid you're going to get hurt? Or are they concerned about what you're doing because they're being selfish and they don't want to see you grow? There's a big balance in that. And I don't know, you know, and I can't answer for you, but most of the time folks know in their heart what it is. And now, it is... Just practice, you know, it, it happens in the world. We're in contact with folks from the opposite sex, and just this contact does need to have boundaries to it. You want friends, you just don't want to, you don't want to hurt the people that love you, the people that you love. And it's okay to say, hey, we're friends, but like when I had nursing students, I didn't accept Facebook invitations for them until after they graduated. Because I had this thing about social media. 
and that was just you know that was a boundary. Same thing though can apply to drugs, alcohol, spending, gambling, church. People can have unhealthy boundaries with religion. Not Jesus, but with church. With religion, some folks get this very, I'm right, you're wrong, and here, let me tell you how you're wrong. And same thing with alcohol. A person can have a beer, but when that alcohol takes over their lives, when they are out there on the road potentially hurting somebody, drugs, we all, most of us take medication. But when it's numbing you, when you do whatever you need to do to get those at the cost of whoever it is around you, you know, spending and gambling. You can be addicted to shopping. We all can be. You know, it's very easy. Like auctions, I have to watch myself at an auction. Because it, 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 and girls, if y'all have never been to one, it, it is so much fun, but you just really have to be careful of having that price in your head. You will not go above that. One time when Lisa and I were dating, I didn't realize it, and I got so caught up in I was bid. I ended up bidding against her because that's how much I'm on the same thing. And that was, and we can sometimes we can get like that. We just don't establish those healthy boundaries. Like, honey, why don't you bid on this? And I'm just going to keep my hands in my pocket. <laughs> Paul. Rise further, but I say it all by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh says a desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not be able to do the things that you please. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not up under the law. That was confusing to me. That was really confusing to me. But Paul, and I looked it up in the commentary, and what Paul was talking about was the law given to Moses. The law given to Moses, we couldn't keep by ourselves. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit. It's accepting Jesus into your life. The flesh is the sin nature we're all, done with, we're all born with. And then Paul goes on to write about the, food, uh, the deeds of the flesh, and there's all kinds of bad stuff. And, but the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the things we strive for, and we can all do. The deeds of the flesh are the reasons we need to set boundaries for our decisions. We're human, and it's okay to have offense. It's so, I mean, for the right reasons, it's okay. They can be as dangerous as ignoring a one-way sign. And I'll tell you something, if you ever end up being on a one-way road, you will never forget it. I have been on one. And I was driving, and I have a wonderful wife. That's all I will say. <laughs> and it was in Italian, and we weren't real sure of the, of the stop sign, uh, of the sign meetings. And Fiat's, uh, well, this one got reversed really quick, and we were able to turn around, but it was a, a one-way sign to boundary. You can only go this direction. Dangerous things happen when you start going the direction you're not meant to. Even after we've accepted Christ as our Savior, our old self's in there. The angel of the devil. Trying to make those decisions. He's on the cross, but he's trying to come off. And he's trying to destroy anything in God that God sees in us. Or God has planned in us. Think about the boundaries that says the attention bumps and signs on the highway. <coughs> Those little pay attentions that you start, maybe you like start messing with the radio, and, bump, 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 and then you're back on attention bumps. Those are kind of boundaries. God will help us put up our road signs, keep us between the lines He wants us in. Maybe there's someone out here this morning that's dealing with someone who's trying to make you do something you know ain't right. You love that person, or maybe even you're afraid of that person in some at some level, professionally, fully afraid of them. Maybe you're having a hard time saying no for another reason. Maybe there's that. 
want to do in your life made at the right time. Maybe you've got your hands so full of stuff and you can't take on another thing and you're not getting anything done. God, how am I going to make it through this? And then it's laid on your heart. Someone says, already told you they would help. Someone says, already told you they would do this. Teach them how. Where they can succeed. Maybe there's someone out there that's just a co-worker, friend, that's wanting to be a little bit more in that. They want to go in a direction you don't want to. That you're just not sure about it. If you're not sure about it, don't do it. Go to God and pray about it. Because you think about what might happen, also think about what might be lost. Go to God in prayer and ask Him to help you set those boundaries you need to set. Y'all, let's go. Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer. Father, we ask that you help us to set healthy boundaries in our lives and the limits. And Father, for our good and for your plan. And Father, for the good of those around us. And help us to tear down the walls that separate us for bad reasons, Father. Those that we put up to protect the hurt and protect this pain that we have and we can't let go of it. Father, help us to let go of that pain. Help us to tear down those walls. But help us set the boundaries for the things that we need to, Father, in order to be the people that you want us to be, Father. And Father, if we're led to help someone establish boundaries or help someone, Father, just let us know what to say and what to do. Many times we, we want to help, but we just don't know even how to begin. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.